Arthritis Unpacked is a patient education resource developed and owned by Janssen Australia. The content is created by Dr. Paul Bird with the support of Janssen. The information provided is for educational purposes and does not replace the advice from your healthcare professional. Always refer to your healthcare professional about current treatments, possible side effects and other considerations. Paul Bird is an experienced rheumatologist and researcher dedicated to the expert management of patients with all forms of arthritis and rheumatic disease. As well as caring for patients in his clinical practice, he continues to undertake arthritis research with fellow Australian rheumatologists and international colleagues, ensuring he is up to date with the most recent medical advances. Welcome to the second episode of Arthritis Unpacked, a podcast series designed to help you understand your arthritis better and help you get the best out of your treatment. Join me, Dr. Paul Bird, an arthritis specialist, which is also known as a rheumatologist, as together we unpack your arthritis baggage, helping you navigate the maze of arthritis terms and treatments. Arthritis without the jargon, arthritis made simple, arthritis unpacked. Today we're going to talk about psoriatic arthritis, the basics. On a sunny March morning, the clinic was busy, the waiting room full. I called Shive's name and he leapt out of the chair, clutching his laptop and phone, and walked confidently toward me. As he walked, he limped just slightly and it was obvious he was in pain, although he didn't want to show it. I greeted him, we walked into the room together, taking a seat opposite each other. I waited a moment, then began. Welcome. My name's Paul Byrne. I'm a rheumatologist, a specialist in arthritis. Your GP sent you here because he thinks I can help you with your arthritis, so can you help me by telling me about your symptoms? He began his story, speaking rapidly. He was clearly frustrated by his symptoms and understandably angry. He was 25 years of age and for 12 months he'd been seeking help, but he wasn't getting better. Despite seeing his primary care practitioner, an orthopaedic surgeon, a physiotherapist and various other health providers. The main reason he had been referred was for investigation of his left knee, which had been swollen, painful and stiff for 12 months. The only incident he could remember before the onset was twisting the knee playing cricket, but the injury was minor and he played out the rest of the game without any pain. That was the last game he'd been able to play. One week later, the knee swelled overnight, twice the normal size, he found it difficult to walk despite taking anti-inflammatory medication. In this case, it was ibuprofen. And he saw his GP. His GP recognised immediately that the problem needed to be investigated and ordered bloods and an X-ray. The results of the bloods were normal. No inflammation in his bloodstream, his GP had told him. And on the X-ray, the joint and bones were normal. He didn't have any other joint symptoms at the time, just the knee, and noting the history of possible injury, his GP referred him to an orthopaedic surgeon. After an MRI and arthroscopy was performed, inflammation was noted but no tears or injuries and he was referred for physiotherapy. But despite his treatment, he was still not making any progress. His work as an accountant was impacted, he had constant pain, couldn't exercise, he was putting on weight and he was starting to feel anxious and depressed. After we had reviewed these symptoms, we discussed whether he had experienced any joint or other symptoms previously that had been treated and resolved. He remembered a strange episode of swelling involving his left big toe that had happened when he was 17. The toe had swelled like a sausage. He'd been treated for an infection, but the antibiotics didn't help, and eventually the swelling and pain subsided. He also recalled having Achilles tendonitis in his early 20s, that eventually resolved after physiotherapy for three months and footwear adjustment. Further history revealed that he did have scalp psoriasis, was very mild and treated only with an occasional lotion, and his father also had psoriasis. Now, the first thing to note is that Chivet's story is a typical story for inflammatory arthritis. In episode one, we talked about the lining of the joint, the synovium becomes swollen and thickened, produces too much fluid, and the joint becomes stiff, swollen and painful. However, while this type of inflammatory arthritis can affect lots of joints at once, for many cases, one or two joints will be affected only. There are other clues in his history as well. The swelling of the toe was likely an episode of tendonitis, 
involving the tendon sheaths around the toe, causing dactylitis, that's the medical term, but more commonly known as sausage digit. Achilles tendonitis is common in young people, but the bilateral nature, that is both sides at once, and the long recovery suggests a possible inflammatory cause. And he has a family history of psoriasis with a personal history of mild scalp psoriasis. You can see that diagnosing psoriatic arthritis and other forms of spondyloarthropathy requires detective work. The rheumatologist must know what to look for and then be able to connect the dots. As in this case, the clues can be scattered over the course of the person's lifetime. But as we gather those clues, the picture and the diagnosis emerge. Shive had psoriatic arthritis, presenting with a swollen, painful knee after a relatively minor injury, with a history of skin psoriasis and clues of previous tendonitis and enthesitis in the background. Can you see the picture? And like a lot of cases, he had endured a convoluted pathway to diagnosis. He was confused, anxious and depressed because of his symptoms and becoming increasingly disabled and frustrated. Sound familiar? Psoriatic arthritis is a term that a lot of people recognise, but not many people know what it means. Psoriatic arthritis refers to a type of arthritis that fits into the inflammatory category. You remember before we talked about inflammatory arthritis is where the synovium is inflamed and produces lots of fluid leading to joint swelling, and how the tendons can be affected, and the enthesis. We also talked about how the spine can be affected in some cases. In Shive's case, he had not had any spine symptoms at any time, making spine involvement very unlikely. And that's about the case for 60% of people with psoriatic arthritis. The involvement is mainly the arthropathy part of the spondyloarthropathy term. Mostly joints involved like the knee, but no spine involvement. In this episode, we begin to unpack psoriatic arthritis. How it presents, how to navigate your way through to the best treatment, What's the most effective diet and exercise? So let's start unpacking. Psoriatic arthritis is a unique form of inflammatory arthritis. And here's an interesting piece of history. Psoriatic arthritis is a distinct disorder, separate from rheumatoid arthritis, and first recognised in a 13th century Saxon skeleton. But it's been around longer than that. Psoriatic arthritis has existed for thousands of years, Skeletal remains discovered in a 5th century monastery in Judea demonstrate features consistent with psoriatic arthritis. Recognition of this disorder as a distinct entity only occurred, however, in the 1950s through the work of Dr. Werner Wright. Dr. Wright's work provided the framework for a better understanding of the mechanisms operating in this condition and eventually led to the development of targeted therapy. That's just a small piece of history. Let me tell you about some of the theories about how and why it starts. Our understanding from research is that something gets into your system and in some people, after dealing with the foreign invader, the immune system can't turn off and it keeps running around as if the body is under attack. Whether it's a virus or bacteria or something else that sets off the process, no one knows. Yet. Researchers are working on this as we speak, but there is a way to go. But it goes like this. When we get an infection, this triggers a response and the immune system, our protector, ramps up. The person may not even feel very sick with the infection, but they usually recover completely. And for most individuals, well, that's it. The immune system response is finished, job done. It goes and sits on the reserve bench, waiting to be called back on the field if needed. But for some people, and we don't know why, their immune system doesn't take a back seat. In fact, having played a pretty good game, it decides the game is still on and it decides to play every position on the field. That's the start of psoriatic arthritis. And the joint synovium is the target. The immune system is everywhere, inflaming the joints, causing the person to feel unwell and tired because it's going hammer and tongs 24-7. So why do some people get it and some people don't? Once again, I must use that phrase, no one knows yet. We have some clues, but right now we can't be absolutely sure why one person gets psoriatic arthritis and another doesn't. Let's unpack some of the clues anyway. Genetics is part of it. The HLA-B gene system is an important system within all of us. These are genes that provide instructions to cells and help your immune system determine which proteins it meets are from your body and which are foreign and potentially dangerous, such as viruses and bacteria. 
there are hundreds of different forms of that gene designated by numbers. We all have different types of HLA-B genes that do the same job, no matter what we have inherited, but one of them, HLA-B27, is found more frequently in cases of psoriatic arthritis. The HLA-B27 gene is found in 10% of the general population, but in people with psoriatic arthritis, up to 25% of cases will have the gene. And in another type of spondyloarthropathy, ankylosing spondylitis, up to 90% of cases have the gene. So this provides a clue as to how the disease is inherited, but is also beginning to provide clues to help tailor treatment. The following factors may increase the risk for developing psoriatic arthritis. A family history of psoriatic arthritis in a first degree relative increases the risk. Smoking is a trigger. People who smoke are more likely to get psoriatic arthritis. And being overweight seems to be an important part of the process. Some people with psoriatic arthritis are prone to weight gain, and weight loss is an important way to help manage the condition. The role of micro trauma around joints seems to be also important in some cases. Stretching of joints or tendons by minor injury can set up an inflammatory cascade in some people, explaining why tendons and entheses are so often involved in psoriatic arthritis. Just like our patient Shive, who had a minor injury to his knee playing cricket before his arthritis began. But did you or your relative eat something wrong to get psoriatic arthritis? Or did you do something wrong? No, not as far as we know. I'm afraid to say that's the best leads we have so far. Research continues to find the cause and lots of different leads are being followed. So let's focus on what happens once someone develops psoriatic arthritis and, as importantly, how we stop it. Now, once the whole game kicks off, it's busy because, as I said, the immune system has got a party going on its own and the normal controls, the normal coaxing from the immune system to bring itself back under control, well, it's not listening anymore. What does all this misguided activity lead to? What happens to the person? Psoriatic arthritis is one of the inflammatory types of arthritis. We already talked about how these conditions affect the synovium, the tissue paper lining of the joints that produces lubricating fluid. So one of the first signs is the joints beginning to swell, and this swelling causes pain as the tissues and nerves around the joint stretch and groan. Hands, wrists, feet, knees, shoulders, virtually any joint can be involved. The onset can be sudden or over a few weeks. What most patients report to me is that they noted stiffness in their joints first thing in the morning or after sitting still for a period of time, and they start to feel exhausted. In psoriatic arthritis, tendonitis can be part of the package, or dactylitis, the sausage digit that Chivet had. Other cases may experience inflammatory lower back pain. At this point, the person is wondering what is wrong with them. They'll be in their 20s, 30s or 40s and think, I'm too young to have arthritis. Generally, they'll take some painkillers or anti-inflammatories and sensibly hang in there, hoping it'll go away. But when the symptoms don't go away, they see their primary care practitioner or GP. I'll talk more about therapy later in the podcast, but for now, although painkillers relieve the symptoms, for most people, they are not going to fix the problem. What happens then, hopefully, is that person seeing their primary care practitioner or health professional will be recognised as having psoriatic arthritis, what's commonly referred to as a diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis. Blood tests will be ordered, images or x-rays are taken, and then the person is referred to a specialist, someone like me, a rheumatologist to help manage the problem. The ideal situation is this happens as fast as possible, from symptom onset to when they come and see me or a specialist like me. And believe me, I wish everyone had that path. But listening to this, your path may have been like Shive. You may have spent your time going from professional to professional, trying to find an answer for your symptoms. Then you might have suffered for a long time before you got an answer. What I'm describing is the ideal road, the road where someone has symptoms, they're recognised early and gets to the rheumatologist quickly for treatment. And I really wish that was the way for everyone. But regardless of the road that you took to get to the rheumatologist, you'll be familiar with what happens when you get there. First, the rheumatologist will listen to your story. Well, they should listen. That's the best way to get information. Then they might ask a few simple questions. Every person I meet has their own story, their own experience. As a rheumatologist, Part of that experience is being able to recognise all of the different stories, all of the different experiences being symptoms of the same disorder and thereafter make an accurate diagnosis. The next part of this process is to examine your joints and tendons, 
gently checking the ones that are swollen and seeing which ones are tender, working out how much the psoriatic arthritis is affecting you at that time. Perhaps, and this varies from rheumatologist to rheumatologist, checking your spine movements and how much your joints can move. They will also check you for skin psoriasis and look at your nails. For me, these indicators also give me a good benchmark as we proceed with therapy to see how much you're improving as we go along. I'll probably listen to your heart and lungs as well to make sure they're okay. We do that just to make sure there's no other background problems that haven't been picked up by other doctors. It's one of those things we're taught to do as physicians and it serves us well. Sometimes we pick up other incidental things that need fixing and we can make sure that we do that as part of your treatment. Once we finish the examination, I'll look at your blood tests. Most people will come to me with tests that have been done by their primary care physician, but sometimes they don't come with any, and I'll order or prescribe those on the spot. But let's assume that you've come with blood test results, and we can look at these together at the visit. That's a quick tour of the causes and symptoms of psoriatic arthritis, as well as what might happen when you first visit a rheumatologist. We'll return to Shive's story later on in subsequent podcasts, so that you can see how he does over time. The next thing that happens is your rheumatologist looks at the tests that are available and will probably order some new ones. These might include blood tests, x-rays or an ultrasound of your joints. And we'll talk about that in the next podcast. I'm Professor Paul Bird and this is a podcast all about arthritis. Without the jargon, arthritis made simple. Arthritis unpacked.